Hey guys, uh, so in this video I'm going to be going over the clear active keyword. Um, so this is primarily just making people aware that it even exists, I think, more than anything. Because um, I've, I've kind of, personally, I've ignored this until a month or two ago. Uh, and I imagine a lot of other people have as well. So when we are violently mashing the clear button uh, three to four hundred thousand times, um, Clear active is what happens on the second press of that button. So I think most of us know that the first clear will just release our selection. Uh, hitting it three times will clear everything. That's a, the same as clear all. Um, clear active is the second press. And what it does is it deactivates any values in the programmer. So what that means is that, assuming you're not in blind, those values will continue to output to the stage but they will no longer be available to be stored. So for example, if I grab all my Smarties, put them at full and put them into a position, we can see them outputting over here. If I hit clear active, which I have on a macro over here, they're still outputting, but you'll notice that the color of our uh, programmer has changed here. So if I reactivate that, we can see there's usually this red dot next to any preset types that are active. Uh, and the color of the text is red background, uh, red text on red background versus when we deactivate it, it is red text on this bluish background. So if I take that and I try to store it over here and I bring that up, let me clear out my programmer, nothing happens because again, nothing was active for being stored. So keeps output going to the stage, but removes any ability to store it. Um, so how do we use this? So, um, one, I keep my clear active keyword on a macro, and I do this for two reasons. One, so that you don't accidentally hit it the third time and go clear out completely. Uh, if you're not sure if you've already hit clear once or whatever the scenario is, um, you know that you're only implementing the function of clear active. You are not going to wipe everything. Um, quick tangent, for any AVO users out there uh, who are coming to MA, if you are dead set on clear only clearing things from the programmer and not uh, clearing out the output, um, this might be the way to go for you because actually you would want to combine it with uh, clear selection. So clear selection and clear active in the same macro, which will release everything, will release your selection and the ability to store from the programmer, but keep the output to the stage. Because I've heard quite a few AVO, pe AVO people get frustrated because they're used to it working that way on AVO. Um, reeling back in from the tangent. So anyways, I keep it on a macro. One, for not getting to clear all. Two is so that uh, I lost my thought. Give me just a second. Um, <laughs> sorry. Second reason is because it doesn't go through clear selection. Um, so when you hit clear twice, um, the first clear is going to release your selection. The second one will hit clear active. Clear active doesn't release the selection on its own. So if I just grab these lights uh, and hit clear active, I can mash this button all day long, but you'll see uh, in my fixture sheet up here that I am, I still have those fixtures in my selection. So what that's great for is that I can grab a bunch of fixtures, put them in some preset look, hit clear active. I've still got them grabbed and I can keep working from there. Um, so for example, like if I'm updating Gobo presets, I'll grab all my Smarties, uh, I'll aim them at the wall. So let's invert that, uh, put them at full. And then, so like, especially once I've cloned, um, one of the first, one of the things I'll be doing doing my, my Gobo updates is that I'll be checking to make sure that all of the Gobo selections not only are appropriate for the Gobo they're supposed to be, but that they are the rotating version of it. So let's go to Smarty over here. And so I will put it in slow rotate. So when I'm storing to one of these Gobo presets, dimmer position aren't going to be included uh, because my store options include uh, the preset filter. However, rotate will be included because uh, it is part of the gobo preset type so if i've put them at this slow or let's say a medium rotate then hit clear active then i can start going through my gobo options to make sure that they are all the rotating version and not have to worry about this uh, the rotating part of that information being included by accident um, and that might be a little more helpful for when you're building uh, pallets from scratch but regardless of what phase you're in there, it allows you to keep control, make it easier to know which information you're going to be storing to a palette or to a sequence or to whatever it's going to be. So there's one example. Uh, 
most frequently I'm going to be using this for um, updating aerial positions. Uh, so like getting to change over, what, 20 minutes uh, up until the next act. Um, instead of having a, a cue list that I go through, which I've also utilized, but I'll grab them. And you can even make a low light macro. So I made one for this video. Um, and all my macro is, is just at preset zero dot, and I've titled the preset low light, um, and then clear active. So to explain low light for a second, for people who haven't encountered it, um, I've only encountered it on the EOS, the ETC consoles. Um, I'm sure there are other consoles out there that have it as well. But basically what it does is it'll take, like let's say I grab just my profile fixtures. It'll put those profile fixtures into a, think of it as like a secondary highlight look. So it'll grab, put them all into a background look. Then as I'm toggling one by one, I can still see the whole group that is in this background look, but the particular light that I'm on is accented more than the rest. So to take that poor attempt at English and turn it into something that actually maybe makes sense, um, let's go into this view again. So I grab all my Smarties. Um, I'm not in highlight right now. I hit low light, and that preset is going to put them in 30% and narrow zoom. So if I go ahead and click that, we see them all come up to those values. Now I'll put them into a position. And now, if I grab highlight, I can next through them, and we can still see what the entire, what the whole is doing, what the group is doing, but I can also see which particular fixture I am working on at that moment uh, to edit it as needed. Uh, and then, oops, and then whenever I'm done, update the preset. But it, it allows me the ability to have some kind of a background look involved with my uh, update without having to worry about accidentally storing any of that information into a preset, uh, especially because a lot of time I'll use store macros that disable the preset filter. Um, so I want to know that whatever information I'm about to store is, well, the information I'm expecting to store. Uh, again, you can do that that same idea though through just if you wanted to put all your fix all those fixtures in uh, uh, thirty percent at narrow zoom, you could store that to an executor, bring that executor up. Um, I've seen people do it with some macro that'll like go into a duplicate user profile, put them at that value, um, then log back into your user profile. That that one felt a little complicated for me, but uh, again, there's it's ma. There's a million ways to do anything. Um, and none of them are necessarily the right or the wrong way. It's just whatever uh, works best for your workflow. And while I'm on that note, I want to be clear that uh, I never want my videos to sound like I'm trying to explain the quote-unquote uh, one and only right way. Um, these are all, all my videos are just to explain how and why I do things in my own file and to provide that perspective from, from what I am doing. Um, but go try other things out, see what other people are doing, watch other people's videos, um, learn from as many people, from as many sources as you can, um, and see what works best for your workflow. Um, it'll not only help you with your own setup, but it'll allow you to adapt when you're having to work uh, in show files with other people as well, so you're not screwing up uh, a workflow that's already been established uh, for that file. Um, so anyways, there's the clear active keyword and many side tangents nobody needed. Um, for any feedback, be it questions, comments, requests for other tutorials or other videos or plugins, sorry, um, you can reach me through my contact form on my website, uh, geoffdesigns.com, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash geoffdesigns. Uh, there's a mailing list on the website. You can subscribe on here. There's Facebook to follow, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know how social media works. Uh, so, hope you guys find some use for it. Um, stay tuned for more videos in the future, uh, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.